Good morning and praise God. Please wave at me. Now for the last time this year, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. If we hear you say that after here, we know you have a problem. So today is the last day. Uh, we don't want you to tell us Happy New Year again. Anyway, uh, it's my joy to be here today to share the word of God with all of us. I didn't need to see you today. Come to the house of God. It's a blessing, a blessing and a huge one to come to this place of worship. And we thank God for what he is doing. And as time goes by, I'm sure we are going to return to more normalcy and perhaps go back to the usual uh, surface schedules. Uh, but in the meanwhile, uh, we continue to worship God together in this way. And those who are following us in uh, social media platforms, we thank you as well for logging in and following. May the Lord bless you abundantly so. Now we are in a new season in the new year. And as such, we have new series that have been tailored uh, around our theme for the year, the theme of restoration. And the focus today is reset, restoration through starting all over again. Reset, restoration through starting all over again. Now, sometimes back, our brother Eric, who I can see here, uh, called me, he had a problem with his phone. And uh, it was hanging, it was slow, and I asked him, what kind of phone do you use? And he told me, a techno. Then I knew the problem. And I told him, now in such situations, you go to that phone, and go to the settings, and you pick on reset to factory settings. And when you do that, your problem will be solved. And that's why I picked on that topic, reset, restoration through starting all over again. Now, to focus on this today, friends, I want to use the portion of scripture that was so well read to us, the scripture of the writing of prophet Isaiah. Now, the prophet is writing to the children of Israel at a bleak period of their history. They are in captivity. They have lost everything they thought they would keep forever. And they were homesick for the land and the blessing God had promised them. They are stuck in their past glory. They knew and had witnessed the doings of God, some miraculous doings of God, but now they are in a predicament which is captivity, and they have no idea how they are going to get out of it. And this is why now the prophet is speaking to them. And the biggest message to them is, change your focus. Quit looking behind. Start looking ahead. It is true God has done many things for you. Forget those things. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Don't you see I'm doing a new thing? Don't you perceive it? I'm making a new way for you. So he is telling them, if you are continually looking behind and getting stuck at where you are, you cannot see where God is taking you. Now, the prophet is trying to tell them two things which will be our lessons for this day. Now, two lessons pick from this particular text. Number one, if you are ever going to move on to a new thing, you must learn you cannot depend on your past victories to sustain you. You cannot depend on your past victories to sustain you. In other words, you cannot dwell in the glory of your past. You cannot dwell in the old glory of your past. Now, the children of Israel had experienced great blessings and victories throughout their history. From the first Passover, to the crossing of the Red Sea, to the conquering of the promised land, to the building of the temple, the children of Israel had seen the hand of God at work in their lives. And now during this period, the prophet is writing, they are in Babylonian captivity. 
And in other words, he's telling them that you don't need to get stuck. You remember what God did for you, but you have no idea what is happening to you now. You know, their faith in what God had done through the past victories was doing nothing to deliver them from their present situation. Their, their old faith, friends, was not sufficient enough to deliver them from their present problems. They needed a new faith. They needed a new vision of what God could do. They needed a new portion of the faith that had brought them thus far. No wonder he is telling them, forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. I am doing a new thing. In other words, brothers and sisters, the question here is not what God had done in the past. The question is, what is God doing right now? There are people who camp in old tents of their past victories. Their daily conversations are punctuated with the phrase, I used to do this. I used to love my parents. I used to do this. I used to do that. And the big question is, why are you not doing it now? You need a new faith, friend. A new vision of what God can do. You need to move in a new zone of God's glory. And I want to give you three biblical examples that will help you understand this better. Now the first story is David. It's the story of David in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now when he was sent by his father to the battlefield to take some food to his siblings, he found the foolish time we called God here threatening the people of God. And he was so touched, he said, this I can do, I can tackle this man. And King Saul said, you're not able to tackle this man. He has been fighting since his boyhood. And then David did something very important. He remembered the past, not for the sake of it, so that the faith of the past can boost him to his present situation. So he told the king, now when I was looking after the sheep of my father, a bear would come. And the lion would come. And with my own bare hands, I would deliver the sheep from the mouth of both the bear and the lion. And then he made this glorious statement. He said, the Lord who rescued me from the mouth of the lion and the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. In other words, friends, David is remembering past victories. Yet, looking forward to the present victory based on what God had done. So it was not a desperate situation like the Israelites. They had seen the hand of God, yet at this point, they did not know what to do. Now, this is a situation that has brought itself in front of David. He remembers the past victories God had given him, and based on that, his faith is boosted to approach the current challenge. Remembering the past victories for today's victory. The next example I want to give you is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 2. Now, when I say Habakkuk, some people really don't know where to find Habakkuk. It's not a, a, a book many people read. It's a good book. He's called the complaining prophet. Now, Habakkuk says in verse 2, Lord, I have heard your fame. I have heard your report, what you have done in the past. And I stand in awe. Lord, I am praying because we are in a problem now. Repeat them. Repeat them in our times. Make them known to us. And in your wrath, remember mercy. So this is the prophet. They're in a predicament. And he's saying, God, we have heard your report. We have heard the way you deliver. We have heard the way you give victories. Lord, we are studying on that faith for us to face this predicament. Renew those deeds. Do them again, O oh Lord. And God did something new to them. And the last example to give you is Lamentation, another book that is not read many times. Uh, these are the Lamentations of Prophet Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. He says, this is a good verse, and I know we have put it into a song. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His masses never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Forget the former things. I am doing something new because the masses of God are new 
every morning. Friends, the message here is you can start all over again. Trust God for a new start. There are things you used to do, but you no longer do. And you so wish in your heart to do them again. And even as I speak now, you can put your finger to some of those things. Things that you used to do, but you're not able to do now. And you so much desire to do them again. May the Lord help you to start again. May the Lord help you to start again. Secondary friends, in order to move on to a new thing in your life, you must know that. You cannot allow your past failures and disappointments to affect your future. And I think many people would identify with this topic. Don't let your past failures and disappointments affect your future. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now, the children of Israel had failed miserably. Every time God blessed them with good things, they returned with evil things. God gave them the temple, they gave him idol worship. God gave them the truth, they lived and proclaimed a lie. God gave them his commands, they lived like they were just mere suggestions. God gave them wealth, they used it to abuse the poor and to run away from God. God gave them himself, they gave him nothing except rejection. God was not condemning them for their past. God was not condemning them for their rebellion. They could have done nothing at that point to change it. Instead, God was holding out the hand of hope. He is in effect saying, forget about your past, what you have done against me. I'm going to give you an opportunity to start all over again. He was giving them another chance to start all over again again. And friends, brothers and sisters, there are people here who could have made terrible mistakes in their past. There are people here who could have gone through terrific disappointments in their past and they have given up on their future. This is your word this morning. This is your word. This is your word. Two weeks ago, a dear lady talked to me and uh, asked her to permit me to say this, having known I'll be speaking about this. She was engaged to a handsome man, as it were. And when they were thinking of just going to visit the parents officially, this dear lady discovered that the young man was cheating on her with her best friend. And she told me, I have given up this thing. I will never get married. And I told her, my sister, though you are hurt, though you are broken, though you are crushed, though you are betrayed, God can give you the strength to start all over again. Thank God that could have been the wrong person. Let's hope God for the right person. So you could be going through a relationship breakdown. You could be going through a relationship failure. You could be going through a relationship disappointment. There are people who could be having heartaches and headaches because of their relationships. I want to tell you today, you can start all over again and may the Lord give you the grace to do that. You could be in business today. You could have made silly mistakes. You could have been conned. You could have been misled. May God give you the strength to start all over again. You could have blooded in your faith. You could have betrayed your faith. You think that God will not accept you back. You could have gone too far into sin. And there's no need to go back, you are saying. There is room for you at the cross. And you can start all over again. You can start all over again. Remember, I think six years ago, I talked to a lady who had committed abortion, I think twice or thrice, I can't remember very well. And she said, now I am not willing to come back to God because I think I have gone too far to come back to him. And I told her, there is nowhere the masses of God cannot reach you. You may think you have gone too far but even at that farthest, God is still available and you can start 
all over again. And friends, I don't know what your situation is this morning. You could be heartbroken now. You could be wondering what to do. Perhaps you are so proud to go back again to start. Please give up your pride. Go back again and start. And God will restore you through going back and starting all over again. Starting all over again is possible, friend. And may God give you the grace to do it one more time. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. And as we pray, if you are here and you need prayer, you need the grace to start all over again, your heart is broken and is wounded, God is able to heal you. God is able to restore you. And if you are such a person as we do the song, please stand so that we pray with you. If you are that kind of a person as we do the song, can you kindly really stand up so that we can support you in our prayer? In the name of the Lord. You could be going through a difficult time, a life situation. May the Lord come through for you. As they do the song, you please stand if you are able, if you need prayer today in the name of Jesus. Please do the song.
dear Lord, we thank you today for your word. And behold, oh God, your sons and daughters are studying because they need the grace and the strength to start all over again. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, may you give them the same. Help them to forget the past and help them to focus on that which you are doing. Your word has told us properly well today. Do not focus on your past. Look, I am doing a new thing. Don't you see it? Lord, right now, open their eyes to see that which you are doing. That new thing you are doing, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Them that are heartbroken, Lord. May you heal those hearts. Them that have been betrayed. Lord, may you heal them, we ask. Them that have been disappointed. Open a new way for them, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are praying for their health or even lay out of their loved ones. Lord, we pray for your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are praying for their relationships, Lord, come through for them, we pray. In the name of Jesus, those that are praying for opportunities of life, Lord, come through for them, we ask. Whatever the case might be, oh Lord, we call upon your name. Remember your people today. Remember your people, oh God. Remember, remember, we ask. And this is our prayer. In the name of Jesus. Unikubuke. Baba, unikumbuke. Unikumbuke.